Welcome to Government Contracting Weekly, sponsored by AOC Key Solutions Incorporated. Government Contracting Weekly is the only television program devoted exclusively to the competitive and dynamic world of government contracting. A world where coming in second place is not an option, but where principled-centered winning is the only approach. Good morning and welcome back to Government Contracting Weekly, where each week we aim to bring you tactics, techniques, and topical information to help you, the government contractor, win contracts, always by a printable sense of winning. This morning, here at the cusp of 2013, we're joined by a panel of experts to help us take a prospective look at 2013. They're gonna aim to make predictions, to help us prepare for potential trends and to determine the takeaways to help you, our viewer, plan for 2013. Our panel are particularly well positioned to address these issues as each one of them serves in a very unique way the entire industry. So they have a panoramic view of government contracting. Welcome first of all to Angela Stiles. She's here with Crowell and Mooring. Good morning. Good morning, thank you for having me. You're welcome. We also have Gary Lloyd, who's CEO of Centurion. Thank you. And we also have Anne Laurent, who's here from Bloomberg, who heads up uh, two analyst groups there. Good morning. So we have a lot to cover this morning. Let's get right to it. Going into 2013, Angela, first to you. Are you more optimistic or are you pessimistic than you were when you were going into 2012? I think I'm less optimistic, but I think people need to remember that we're still spending $600 billion on products and services. There are a lot of federal dollars out there for smart companies still to go after. So it's not pessimistic, I think just a little bit less optimistic. Than you were before going into yes. 2012. Gary, what do you think? You concur? Or? Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not really optimistic, not really pessimistic, more of a realistic view. Um, we had a lot of uh, challenges in 2012, budget uncertainties leading to existing new contracts being canceled or delayed. We're looking at 2000, just in January alone, uh, $23 billion worth of uh, contracts expiring yeah. for the entire year, $291 billion worth of contracts being expired. I think those companies, though, that focus on presidential strategic initiatives and align themselves accordingly, they're going to do fine. They're going to do fine. What do you think, Anne? Pessimistic, you know, optimistic? It, it, it depends. I think that a hungry company that's smart and well-positioned could be optimistic about this market. It's, it's, uh, it's got a lot of interesting new places to go. It's got a lot of uh, still effervescence in it, even though overall we're in a declining, uh, declining space. If you can steal market share, if you can acquire new contracts, if you can steal recompetes, then you, you've definitely got a chance. And I so think there are a lot of folks in this, in this market who are in the business to do just that. You so know, they, they, want they have to, to be positioned because they have planned and they're doing the right thing. So exactly. as long as they have, then they'd be better positioned. Well, I think what, yeah. what Anne's saying, you know, the government's got to do more with less. And those companies that are well positioned, looking at those initiatives that are very important, national priorities for the government, and they're making those moves to be positioned to take advantage of those opportunities, they're gonna do well. And that's because the state of the market has changed. And speaking of the state of the market, Obama, President Obama is going to be giving the State of the Union address soon, in a couple of weeks. What is the state of the government contracting community? What are you seeing out there, Andrew? You have all those crawl and mooring um, clients. What are you seeing amongst your clients and the market in general? There's uncertainty, there's nervousness, there's questions about how to address the marketplace going forward. Are our contracts gonna be terminated? Are they gonna be cut back? Where are our best opportunities for uh, selling particular products and services? So the marketplace is really, I think the companies are taking a very hard look and that's good. Yes. You know, we really need our companies to become more efficient. That goes up to what Anne's just saying. It's only, it's only, and only those companies that are efficient will actually succeed. Gary, what do you think on that? Well, I, I agree with Angela. I mean, the, the, the companies that are more efficient and are making the right moves right now, if they're looking to acquire different companies or business units in cybersecurity, healthcare, IT, they're getting positioned. If you look at uh, what's going to happen in the, in the VA, taking care of our war, war fighters coming home from Afghanistan and Iraq, they're going to do well. I think it's making smart moves, being more efficient, and, and it's, uh, it's going to be a solid year for those companies, as Anne alluded to earlier. Yes, companies those companies that are prepared moves. correctly. Anne? You know, I think the companies have, have, have already been taking into account the fact that the overall spend is down, the Defense Department's going to be facing more cuts, whatever happens. Uh, I think that, that in, in essence, they're, they're positioned well, and now they're, they're getting ready to cut their costs. They're looking, they, they already have been acquiring. Uh, on the commercial side to better balance their businesses. I think that there's, uh, there's a lot of smarts in the market. Overall, look, we've still doubled our federal spend 
in 10 years. Yes. So, so it's, there's it's money still in the bust, market. Yes. It's moving around. And it, the, 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 the upward you know, jump since, uh, since 2009 has tailed off. The trajectory, we're the still trajectory in a, isn't we're there. We're still in a, yes. in a big market. Yeah. And what about so the trends that we see? So we're still on a big market. We know we're in a vast market. But what do you see for 2013, Angela? So I think there's several trends. The government itself is also looking at being efficient. So you've got strategic sourcing initiatives. You've got them looking at how they cut spending. Mobility, efficiencies, yeah. Absolutely. IT initiatives. You know, and how do we how do we actually do what the government needs to do? So you really have to look at the trend of how the government is going to the marketplace and buying and they are doing it differently now. And they're doing it more efficiently. Do you think that's the same thing, Gary? Well, I think that's um, totally agree with what Angela is saying. Yes. I mean, the, the, the budget pressures are going to squeeze margins and companies are going to have to be more efficient in their delivery if they're going to make a decent profit. I think the other thing that we're, we can expect going, we, we saw it in 2012, we can certainly expect it in 2013, LPTA, lowest price technically acceptable. It's, it's going to be norm now, we, we, so everybody's going to adjust to it. That's going to be norm. So you've got those going on. I also think though if you reflect back in the 90s, you had a, a rash of mergers and acquisitions in the 90s. I think we can expect to see that again in 2013. That's what Centurion is predicting then. That's yes. what we're predicting. Yeah. And what about you, Anne? Do you say the same thing in terms Certainly, of trends? Certainly, yeah, absolutely agree that um, M&A will pick up when they're, you know, as certainty begins to creep back into the market, you're going to see companies that have been on the sidelines holding a ton of cash start to spend. Are you Lockheed seeing that with Coronavirus clients, so. do you well, think? Well, I think there's some difficulty. I think it's going to be a little bit different than the 90s because of the organizational conflicts of interest issues. So companies can't both help the government decide what their needs are and draft statement of words at work and then also bid on that. And so you do see things like Northrop Grumman spinning off the businesses that are helping the government decide what their needs are, draft the statement of work, and those are going to be separate. So they're going to be different types of mergers and acquisitions. You're not going to have huge mergers of companies that actually can't do both types of work. So no, different and entities and also has actually said, we don't, we're not going to, we're not going to go back to the Last Supper. Right. However, yes. in cybersecurity, for example, little teeny tiny companies out there with, because with because the big firms hack, need those capabilities. Correct, they're going to acquire them. That's what they're going to go out and buy. Yes. And they already are buying. EMC yes. has been gobbling up cybersecurity <laughs> companies. Now they've just announced a joint venture with VMware. That's going to change the cloud and data analytics market. Uh, you see Digital Globe and GOI uh, are now are now coming together. That's going to mean one large commercial satellite imagery provider because for the they entire want government. Because they end-to-end to be able to offer that. Right. I think that's no, what's but you're not going to see, yes. you're not going to see, see the creation of a Lockheed Martin no, no, or, or, or no, anything no, like that no, again, no. and it's verboten anyway. But Angela's point is very good. There will be those spin-off entities yeah. in a different you know, creative way. The other way. thing, though, that's is what, what Angela kind of alluded to started down that path. When you look at these transactions that we yes. can expect to see in 2013, these are going to be complicated, stringent, yes, tight transactions. Yeah, that's yes. right. All tight transactions basically for 2013. Yeah. Welcome back. Our guests again are Angela Stiles of Crowell & Mooring, who heads the government contractor practice then. Anne Laurent from Bloomberg Government, who heads two of the analyst groups. And Gary Lloyd, the CEO of Centuria. Wanted to ask each of you about the keys to winning. Angela, in your client base at Carola Mooring, what are their keys to winning a government contract? Two things, I think. Past performance and articulating your past performance well in your proposal. Don't assume, because you're the incumbent, that they know what a good job that you've done. And then the second one is really picking the right partners for your team, people that you can bring to the table that add value and that the government trusts and knows as well. Oh, great. So if you're the prime, the right kind of sub. Absolutely. Yes. Gary, what about you? What do you think are the keys yeah, to winning uh, for Centurion clients? I think clients? you've got discipline, focus, compelling on, you know, competing on analytics and making fact-based decisions on bidding and no bidding. I think when you look at the 10 factors that influence winning, understanding your, the customer's problem, that's key. Uh, your customer relationship, is it solid, is it strong? Team, that's very important. And it Proven goes on, and there's, there's so many it goes of them, on and on and on. 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 There are 10 factors that absolutely will drive whether you're successful or whether you're going to be unsuccessful. And you've got to focus on those keys. What about, Anne? You For 2013, one word, price, 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 price. Cut out the bells and whistles, we're out of the, the, uh, the best value contracting environment, we're into the lowest price contract environment. 
So in other words, your company's got to be efficient, it's got to be lean, it's got to be ready. Yes. And don't trust your incumbency. Okay, and, gotta, and in terms of that, so LPTA, even though it was this big phrase in 2012, it's just going to be Durago now. You just might as well forget, is it LPTA or not? Everything is. Yeah, That's I think what we should just call it price. Price, price, price sensitive. Price sensitive. Every Absolutely. Going so really, forward. rather than thinking about what you can do about the prices, you've got to be super efficient because otherwise you can't be competitive. And you've got to get your customer to be able to say, I'm cutting costs and here is how I'm doing and yes. you've got to you've got to be in tune with your customer your customer that government customer is under enormous amount of pressure right. to reduce their budgets to cut costs you want to be the program you want to be the new entrant that is selected or continues on and you Take have to think about it from their perspective so from the government's perspective if they've got a lower price offer in front of them they're going to have to justify choosing you if you're higher. Absolutely. So, so you've got, there's got to be real value there. So what? So in terms of that, Angela, you're used to giving your clients advice. What's the, the most important earnest piece of advice you're looking to give clients in 2013? Well, right now, it's all about the dollar value of the procurement. But you have to remember that it's about the product or the service. It's about giving them what they need. And that's in lieu of your profit. So all the time it's going to be about doing a good job for the government and not thinking about your bottom line as much as you might have before. And legally from the, your perspective as attorneys advising obviously you don't want a bid protest so you want to make sure you're as rock solid as possible. That's right. Yes. And what about from no, Centurion's perspective? I agree perspective? with what Angela is saying. The customer relationship is so critical and, and it's not you know let me have a cozy relationship with that customer. It's about demonstrating value. It's about delivering. It's about being in tune with their budget pressures and making adjustments accordingly. And this is early on in the process if you're an incumbent. This is also coming in being very price competitive going forward. You're in tune with the customer, you're meeting their mission, you're supporting their mission objectives, you're delivering a lot of value. Yeah, and that's value is what they want and that's what the advice is. And what about your advice from Bloomberg? This is Bloomberg? a very, very competitive market that we're moving into. Yes. Get on multiple award contracts, whether you partner to get on them or whether you win a spot yourself. Get on BPAs for strategic sourcing. If you're not on, you're out. Yes, and often for five, the, five or more years. And that's you've the got point to get, that Angela made about the right teaming partners. You've exactly. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You've got to get on, and you've got to, and you've got to then learn how to churn task orders on those contracts. Because more and more, that's what this administration is is pushing agencies to do: use multiple award contracts, move to strategic sourcing deals. So if you want business, you've got to be on them. Yeah, you've got to be on the multiple awards. So I think that the things that were new in 2012, you're saying are going to become Durago 2013. LPTA, multiple award contracts. Absolutely. Strategic sourcing, yes. absolutely. And preparing for those. Absolutely. And making sure that you're advising appropriately. And what do you think in terms of one soundbite piece of advice, it would be every single day, day in, day out, crawl and more in clients? Do it right. Cross your T's, dot your I's. Do it right. Demonstrate value to your customer. Got an Ann. Don't add bells and whistles to your proposals. Make sure that you're tight. What do you think then also for those trends moving forward? Are they going to continue throughout 2013? Any differentiations in there? Anything that could happen in 2013 is going to change that? I think the agencies are struggling with the spending issues. And so you're going to have to realize that they're struggling with how to resolve them themselves and That's understand that it's difficult for them. That's a good point. And, Gary? And That's where the LPT comes You know, We've talked about it quite a bit. LPTA, our, our government customers are going to be price sensitive to everything they do. It's going to be incorporated in every acquisition going forward in 2013. The contractor has to be in tune with the customer dynamics. What pressures are they really under, not only to meet their mission, but to work within a budget that is constantly under pressure. And that's why they need more information that Centurion provides, because you've got to be more savvy. You've got to know what's going you on. You've got to have yes. the, the, the business intelligence is critical, and then competing on analytics, I mean, fact-based decisions, quantified decisions. That's going to be so important. Why? Because it's got to uh, help the government contracts be more efficient going forward, yep. and they've got to figure out ways of being more efficient how do they increase their win rate? And then for the win rates, Anne, you're looking at that too and advising Bloomberg clients. We are, but I think that yes. if you're talking about what are going to be the trends that continue yes. from 2012 into 2013, sadly for everybody, the bad news is it's going to continue to be quite uncertain. Remember, we're on a continuing resolution that, does, that ends at the, uh, the end of March. We don't know what's going to happen there. And it's There's a, a tremendous amount of uncertainty still about what's going to happen with our deficit situation, so budgets will be uncertain. We're not getting a lot of clarity about what cuts will be made where exactly. So I think a lot of contractors are still going to be unclear about what's going to happen to their programs, about what the directions are. So finding a good spot in one of the hot places is very important. Yeah, so for 2013, there is still going to be uncertainty, which really isn't great news for anybody. Yeah.
Welcome back. Now we're going to have a rapid fire section, a little bit of fun. We're going to toss out some topics and words that are pertinent to this industry and see what each of you thinks, whether they're going to be in 2013 hotter, colder, so more of them, less of them. So I'm going to start with you, Gary. And defense, more or less? Uh, defense, I'd say cold on new starts. Yes. I'd say warmer when you look at logistics, O&M, and unmanned vehicles. And defense. We also consider that to be a colder space because the drawdown means less money. However, the drawdown also means new opportunities for folks working for the State Department and USAID. Right, that's true. Right. And I think it is different. We're fighting different kinds of war, and we need different types of contractors to do that these days. Yes, different. Cybersecurity, Gary. Uh, very hot. The threatening in, in cyberspace right now is incredible. Very hot. National security issue, yes. And yeah, also hotter because, look, we're going to have <coughs> either an executive order or some legislation that's going to create a, a ripple effect of regulations, clarify that market, and I think it's going to really be much bigger going forward. Yeah, and Angela? Mild. It's not a mature marketplace yet. Yeah. It's still art research and development. So there's not a lot, production. There's a lot still going on there. How about contractor profits, Gary? Contractor profits, the budget pressers, they're going to continue to squeeze contractor profits. It's going to be a challenging, challenging year. And Anne? Um, yeah, also colder. And I think uh, part of that is because there's a, a commoditization that's happening even in pro the professional services market where that's forcing this di dissipation in the pressure. market Downward between pressure high fees. margin and low margin. And you're seeing companies spinning off their lower margin businesses. Downward pressure. What about you, Angela? Colder, but learn to be a caterpillar. Learn how to remake yourself as a company when you're you know, faced with difficult situations. Yeah, great advice. And Gary, what about bid protests? Uh, bid protests hot, unfortunately, uh, especially for incumbents. Incumbents have got to go in and protect their, be in a defensive posture to protect their position with their customer. More importantly, demonstrate early on in that contract that you can come in at a lower price going forward. Bid protests then? Yeah, also it's going to be hotter, definitely. Uh, even even despite the, uh, the uh, new fee that Bloomberg first reported, uh, $400 to file a protest, it's not going to stop anybody from filing them, and there's going to be a lot more competition that yeah. will spawn them. And so from Coral Mooring's perspective, Angela, bid protests. Oh, <laughs> it is definitely hotter, and I agree with both Gary and Ann. You know, be prepared if you're an incumbent to fight that award when you get it, and nobody's going to really care much about the fee. It's just more money for GAO. Right. Yeah. And, and what about <laughs> M&A activity? Oh, because they, of the I, market, I think Gary. it's going to be very hot in the future. I think for a couple of reasons. One, companies are going to need to find those niche markets that are higher profit margins that complement what they're going after. That's going to be very, very important. I think, two, they've got to find those companies that can complement and bring in leaner operating practices to help streamline some of the operations internally for delivery. And M&A activity, mergers and acquisitions, Anne? Yeah, I would kind of say that's hot as well. Companies are sitting on a lot of, the big companies are sitting on a lot of cash right now. They're looking for places to put it. Uh, the uncertainty has prevented them from buying, so there's pent-up demand to do some buying. And also there are places where large companies, the major contractors and the folks that have been in this market a long time, don't have the expertise. They need to buy it. They need to because they need to have that kind of on board for that so they can mar market play place offering. Angela, from Coral and Mooring's perspective, M&A must be in your sweet spot. And what are you seeing? In Absolutely. Think? Well, what we are seeing is that a lot of the creativity is at the smaller startup companies and the larger companies are buying those to bring to the table the creativity that they need to solve the government's problems. And, and you actually lead us in, Angela, to a great point about uh, small company set-asides. Gary, Centurion, what do well, you think? Well, just to follow on with Angela saying, I think that's going to be a hot opportunity, not only for political reasons, but for really pragmatic, there are real drivers that are going to help small business in the future. It's going to be good for the economy. There's creativity. We've got to stimulate that area. Small business is going to be hot. And they would say small businesses are, are the backbone of America and drive America. What do you think, Angela, on, on that for Anne? Well, I think that small business set-asides are going, are going to increase. It's, uh, it's going to be hotter. I think that what we're seeing that, especially on multiple award contracts, which I, I do think that are one place you really need to look for business. Small business set-asides are increasing. That means that small businesses are actually doing better than they used to be doing on multiple award contracts. It's a good space for them. It is, yes. And so we often talk about, we talked about on the show before, about that small businesses from your perspective, Angela. The problem is there aren't enough small businesses for the dollars that are already out there. And yes. so what we're seeing is a lot of fraud. And that's what companies really need to watch for, is using the small businesses in the wrong way as the prime contract. Posing and putting somebody in place to make it look like there's yeah, not really a lots, facade. Lots of enforcement Too many in that facades. area. Yes. yes. And so the small business now sort of transitioning on that note, what about the, the bridge, um, bridging the chasm between government and industry? We, we talked about this quite a few times this year. Do you think that it's widening or is it going to be a better place 
in terms of the dialogue between government and industry, Gary? I think it's it's kind of uh, two two fronts. So on the one front, where your re uh, government contractors are going to have, I mean, uh, contracting officers uh, are either retiring or the budgets are going to be under pressure and they're going to re reduce staff, having to do more with less. I think that could be colder. I think on the hotter side, however, those companies that are currently incumbents or they're pursuing business with government customers and come in and demonstrate value, understand their problem, and look at, d at solutions that can actually solve their problem, they're going to do well. They are going to do well. And Anne, do you think bridging the chasm, larger chasm, smaller, more or less? Well, of course, colder? it depends on your perspective, right? Which side you're on. But yes. I think that overall, government is going to be squeezing its suppliers for, for, for lower costs. And that's probably going to cause some friction. The government itself is facing that same squeeze. Yes, right. And Angela, do you think more or less? Well, the problem is the enforcement trends. So with so many more enforcement trends, Department of Justice looking at False Claims Act issue, it tends to be moving the contractors and the government farther away from each other and not as willing to interact in a partnership when at this time, this is what they really need to do is to be partnered together to solve the solutions in an efficient way. But I think you see Justice and other agencies, IGs kind of pushing that relationship apart. Yes. And I think just to feed on that just a little bit, what Angela is saying, that government contractors and government agencies are looking for ways to have that open dialogue. And in terms of the open dialogue, though, what about multiple award contracts, though, Gary? Oh, multiple award contracts, incredibly hot. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. You know that I think that the, this is a place that uh, the contractors really need to look. I mean, we're looking, at, we're looking at the consolidation, however, of those contracts, so people have to be careful what they get on. They, they do have to be very careful. Angela, hot to be awards. on them or you won't get really your business. Hot, yeah. Yes. And last but not least, healthcare IT in one word, hot or colder? Extremely hot. And? Very hot, D-O-D-V-A, E-H-R. Yeah, and Angela, hot. really hot. OK, so now we're going to really take out our crystal ball. And I'm going to ask you, Anne, what do you think are going to be some of the major procurements coming up in 2013? Major procurements to watch is NGEN, the Navy's uh, network's uh, com computer systems contract. 800,000 users, I believe it's the biggest internet in the world. Why should we watch it? LPTA. It's been competed LPTA. That was a shock to all of the companies that were interested in it. But they're it's ready. Going, they're ready for that. But now. it's going to be yes. it's going to be interesting to see how low country uh, companies are willing to go on this to bid on this contract. If they if they're driven very low, that's a good predictor for how effective LPTA is going to be. So that can really set a low low bar, low level, and we know for it 2013. May. Crystal it Ball, may. Angela, Coral and Mooring. Strategic sourcing for software, which is probably a good thing because it may solve some difficult intellectual property issues with licensing for software providers. Renewable energy purchases by the Department of Defense. They are moving towards buying electricity with renewable energy. It's a huge new market with private sector financing. So we're less dependent on foreign oil and for foreign Absolutely. energy sources. Gary, what do you think in terms of your crystal ball centurion? Multiple war contracts. You've got Army INSCOM that's valued at about $5 billion. You've got Army TEACH. $8 billion. You've got another one with Army, D3I. It's valued at about $4.9 billion. You've got GSA Oasis, and that's valued at $48 billion. And then another one that comes to mind is DHS uh, with PACS. And I think that's valued about $1.5 billion. So you think really, for, from the Centurion perspective, you've got to have this knowledge because you have to know what major procurements are there. Yeah, so, yeah. so you should be listening to Bloomberg. You're going to advise your clients on it, and Centurion can give and you the information. To Centurion too. Yeah, absolutely. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> then what about moving ahead? What about the reasons? The reasons for optimism. We want to be optimistic. We've got to be optimistic to survive. So, Anne, what do you think about what is positive to look forward to in 2013? Look, you're selling to the biggest market in the entire world. There's a lot of money in it. There's a lot of new developments happening. There's a lot of new spaces opening up. Look, we're going to have a new commercial space market. We're going to have a new satellite market with hosted payloads. We're going to have lots of new and uh, uh, interesting stuff happening in, uh, in cybersecurity. Little tiny companies can, t can get a foothold. Yeah, so it's, so it is vast. Look at the glass half full that we do have space. And Angela, what would you say is optimistic about two? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Uh, I think yes. the companies that come yeah. out of this will yeah. be strong companies for a long time. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. That's right. right. Yeah. And Gary, exactly. what do you think? Well, I think uh, what Anne's talking about the budget pressures. I mean, it's it's a it's been a tough challenge in 2012. Going though into 2013, it is a huge pool of opportunities. You've, we're spending over a billion, uh, over a trillion dollars in the federal arena. There's lots of opportunities for small business, for mid-sized business, for large companies. And like Angela said, those companies that have made moves in 2012 and will continue to make those moves in 2013, they're going to be very well positioned and although lean, 
they're going to be successful. They will be successful. So your predictions then? We know obviously companies that are inefficient and are bloated and have those bells and whistles, as Anne refers to, aren't going to do well. But Anne, what other predictions do you have from a Bloomberg perspective for next year, 2013? I think we're going to continue to see the, uh, the, 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 the contractor market bifurcate. We're going to see uh, companies spinning out their lower margin businesses, keeping their higher margin businesses. We're going to see companies hunkering down some, but also trying to su suss out where are those remaining big R&D dollars? Where can we find something where we have high margin? And on the lower margin side, I think you're going to see some of those companies like uh, when L3 and Angility split. Angility actually doing quite well on Seaport E, for example, mm -hmm. the largest uh, multiple award contract in the government right now. So not necessarily bad news for the companies that are spun off. So uh, again, no, this, no company can... You saw this with SEIC. Yes, you, right, right. You heard no from company. Angela yeah. and Northrop Grumman. There's these smart companies that are making smart moves. They're going to be well positioned. They will be, yes. Angela, what do you think from Kroll & Moyne? What are your predictions at Kroll & Moyne for next year? Increased oversight and enforcement. You're going to see historic False Claims Act cases in the next couple of years because the government is very focused on it. Yes, and so it's a revenue source. That's yeah, right. it's that's increasingly right. a revenue source. It a lot is. of money yeah. coming in through. So, FCA. so a lot of money coming in. So we've seen some of the industries and some of the areas that are going to grow. So predictions that are going to grow for next year. Where do you see it's going to be? Healthcare, IT. It's going to be cybersecurity. Anything else that we haven't talked about? Uh, special operations, ISR. Uh, intelligence, uh, uh, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Uh, data analytics to help. The Defense Department, for example, chew up all of the imagery that's coming in through ISR uh, to help uh, other agencies improve and make more efficient their operations. Yeah. That's exactly when you look at Medicaid and Medicare in 2012, a large, large multi billion dollar contract data center consolidation. You're going to see those efforts. How can the government do more with less? They're making smart moves as well. They are. And they're going to continue to make that. They need partners from our government contractors to work with them to understand those pressures and understand the objectives and understand uh, the budget constraints to move forward. And that gets back to LPTA. LPTA, that is one trend that's going to continue. I know Ann's hammered on it. It's yes. going to continue for quite a, quite a while. Will. Yeah, and Angela mentioned that too. I remember that. So listen, that's right. this, this morning we've heard lots of things from each of you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, all of us, and particularly Angela. Thank you from Kroll and Mooring's perspective. You. Really appreciate that this morning. And also to Gary from Centurion. Thank you for all of your data and information. And to Anne from Bloomberg uh, with your analyst perspectives. It's been very helpful. As you've heard, the key issues for the coming year, they will be a lot of activity in terms of M&A. You've got to be efficient. You've got to consolidate for efficiencies and dealing with the added expenses um, in the marketplace. They've got to be tight. Our viewership grew tremendously last year from mid-September, and we've actually been overwhelmed here with a tremendous marketplace response. Our country certainly couldn't function without the dedicated work of each of you and your respective firms in the government contracting industry. For you, to you government contractors, every American owns a great debt of gratitude. We hope you found today beneficial, and we look forward to having you watch in 2013. You've been watching Government Contracting Weekly, sponsored each week by AOC Key Solutions Incorporated. Government Contracting Weekly is the only television program devoted exclusively to the competitive and dynamic world of government contracting. For additional information, comments, questions, or suggestions, please write us at governmentcontractingweekly.com.